what's going on so i just want to go ahead and make this video i'm transitioning i'm a trucker so it's pretty much truckers that's transitioning okay look girl um i'm tired i don't feel like driving you get 70 hours to drive that we expect you to be in put that ass to the seat drive 11 hours out the day girl i'm tired i don't feel like doing that shit i need a peace of mind i can't even work on my voice honestly yeah i can't because shit they keep fucking one to run you all over the place and when your 70s out you're supposed to do a 34 hour reset i don't know why the fuck they keep on wanting to put a load on me and shit because i have good recap hours meaning whatever the fuck is left over from when you quit for the day you know and it just circulates it's good time back whatever the fuck so i got 12 hours so of course they're gonna want to put a load on me i don't want to do it i'm tired my eyes hurt my body hurts girl i'm over it I can't even have me time to work on my voice. That's why people quit trucking. They disrespect the drivers nonstop. Then you live in a shitty ass fucking environment. It's like a half of a studio on wheels. So with that said, fuck it, girl. Let's be real about this situation. They want to act like you're supposed to get a 30 minute break. Er, er, no, not. It's not going to work, sweetie, because let's keep this shit real. If I'm working at your local fucking Subway or Burger King, shit like that, and girl, it's an 11-hour shift, you get a whole hour, so why the fuck do I get 30 minutes? You got the game twisted. This ain't that. All right? <laughs> girl, we're gonna get into it. And then they act like you're not supposed to have a life. They don't even want to send you home. They make up lies to keep you on the road. Girl, I'll park this motherfucking truck. Fuck it. And that's why people quit. This is MTV, how I'm living. This is your environment you're living in. See? Okay, and let's come to the back. Let's let's see. Boom. My little bed, trust me, this is not the cushy mattress. They give you a toddler bed to start off with. That bitch hurts, has no cushion to it, and you have to end up spending four or five hundred dollars to get yourself a mattress to put in that motherfucker. And no, they they will not pay for that. Okay, and if I let this down, think about it. Boom. If it's somebody else, then my shit is like that. So if you've been locked up, girl, a two-man cell, you know what I'm talking about. I don't even have enough. You see, I got shit bags on my bed. Because look, girl, I, this shit is not... Look, look, look. This shit, what, what, what is this going to do? There's no space at all. Okay, look. My fault. You see that? After I put a couple of things in there, it's over. Boom. This little space, what is this gonna do? I can't fit none of my wigs in a bitch or nothing. Boom. So I have to put my fucking toiletry shit there because I gotta at least have some type of order and balance. Then you got the little stuff around here you get to use, and this is bullshit. Usually other companies are better than this. They have like deeper cabinets and shit. Think about it. If I want to get a fucking um, flat screen or a fridge, that's going to have to be up in a, at the passenger seat. Okay. Yeah, that's how I'm living. I'm back in jail. This dude probably wants me to rush this load, and I'm not going to do it. He was like, oh, it's supposed to be at the St. Louis drop yard. Oh. Girl, I'm not going to do that. I'll call safety. That means, you know, I'm not able, capable of driving. My phone's so tired. Bags underneath my eyes. Girl, I don't even have time to even fucking do my makeup, hair, work on my voice because of shit like this. And then, like, people in your city, you have your local LGBT centers and shit. Girl. All right, I had to move back to Indianapolis to handle some some things. Everybody like knows me. Um, I lived in San Antonio, and they have like pretty much help. But I couldn't do shit because of you don't have your, any time to yourself trucking. It's like either some companies are shitty; they want to send you home for thirty four hours. Girl, what the fuck is thirty four hours gonna do? The fuck? My body's not re not recovering from the beat down that it's taking beating my back out and running through me and I, yeah i'm saying some fucked up shit but think about it at least if you're gonna fuck me spin on a tip a little bit
so I can enjoy it. <sighs> Lord Jesus. It has to be a better way. I cannot. I don't know how I'm going to really function and get my voice together. Because every time I turn around, they try you. They say bullshit. And then the full nigga comes out in you. And you be ready to snap. And, you know, snap, crack on pop. Girl, I can't do this shit. So I'm trying to see, like, what am I going to do? I need a vacation. And I really want to take one, but I had to go back to Indy because I got to get perio work done. If you know what that means, like periodontis, it's gum disease. I got a lot of shit going against me, but I'm trucking and I'm going to break down some more shit you got to do and with the trucking world and how they play with you and shit. And if you're like from a certain part of the country, I'm going to tell you exactly how to get down. Most, especially when you're new, they would try to keep you on the West Coast. Everybody else, if you're from the West Coast, they keep you on the East Coast type thing. This is real right in the South. And I've like noticed this, the games they play, because it's other motherfuckers, they get in loads going to PA, Massachusetts, New York, all that. And if you like live in Indianapolis or like you had like a, what else? I had, they check your shit too. I had a license out of Cleveland, Ohio and Minnesota. They won't give me shit going through that, girl. No, they know better because I find a way to be home or go to somebody's crib and chill. If I'm in, like, Minnesota, I'm going to my uncle's crib. That's If I'm going to Minneapolis, it's, I'm parking it, bitch. It's over. They know shit like that. So they don't send you in those directions, places that you're affiliated with. So they try to keep me the fuck out of Minnesota, Ohio, <laughs> Indiana, anything that's close to it. They play games. But yeah, this is my life right now, so... Oh yeah, don't forget, you can't quit because, look... <laughs> let's be real, girl, look... Orientation is bullshit. They room you with motherfuckers, too. So, it was a guy from Houston. I hope you're watching this because you're a bitch. But look, um... I was housed with this motherfucker. This is before I was transitioning. Um, Alright, I was sick. I had, like, a sinus infection. Nigga was trying to be helpful, whatever. So he wanted to get drunk to smoke kush. I didn't really give a fuck. You're not supposed to do that, but whatever. And I could see the drinking part, yeah, because you... He wasn't assigned to a truck yet. You know, you're trying to get a trainer to learn the operations. That's what they do, put you on a trainer, meaning you got to be with somebody on the truck for a whole month. And that's, that's bullshit. You might not get along with that person. So here's what happened. He gets caught. I told him to put the beer up in his duffy. He didn't want to do it. So he was like, they're not going to, they're not going to check. Whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm going to leave the room um, dirty. The, all this dumb shit, right? Girls, all right? Man, look, look, look. If we check in and out two, three times a day, they're checking. So, girl, they took a picture. He's like, I'm going to throw the Modelo beer away. It's too late, nigga. You might as well continue to party. And then he indicated me. I told him not to. If you get jammed up, nigga, don't mention my name. Like Jeezy said, don't indicate me. Of course, I like the drink. That's another problem I have. So, of course, the alcoholic was not going to turn down shit. Girl, I killed like six tall boys of Modelo's. I didn't give a fuck. And I was fucking with this chick anyway. So, it was what it was. Shay's probably watching this one. Like, oh my god, he's transitioning. Why? Girl, because I wanted to. That's why. Anyway, look, because I felt that way. Next. I don't want to be a nigga. How about that? Okay, look. Let's keep it 100. When I seen this nigga in the white man's interrogation room, and we're in Texas, by the way, this Stevens Transport is in Dallas. Girl, it's bullshit. I looked at him. I'm like, I'm watching him. Like, he's going to flip. He's going to roll on me. I see it. As soon as I seen the motherfucker talking to him, he put more pressure. He dropped his head, put his hands on his knees. I said, he rolled on me. He, he just, I told everybody, I, I'm about to go back and pack this over, bro. He told on me. They said, how do you know? You know, he could have just took it, took, took it to the head like a G. Girl, that motherfucker called me in and said, yeah. He said he gave you a six-pack. I was like, 
I haven't had a drink since I've been here. So I was like, yeah, the last time I had a drink is when I was at the Greyhound station waiting to be picked up. That was it. And I'm like, other than that, no, I haven't drunk on premises. Well, I think I'm gonna have to send you home anyway. And I'm like, you know, redneck motherfucker from Texas. You know how they are if you seen the first 48. So I knew what I was going up against. I was like, you know what? Fuck it. Send me on back up north then. I said it is what it is. I'm not going to sit over here and play and indicate, you know what? This motherfucker, everybody was drinking in that motherfucker. If we're going to be specific, you know, if we're going to be specific about some shit, bitch. I, I kept it all the way 100. I was like, hell, your people to work here were drinking on a job. Oh, can I get some names? Whoop, whoop, whoop. I said, that's not my business to tell you all that shit. I kept it 100. I said, you go figure it out. You got cameras or some shit, even though that's in the form of snitching, but not indirectly snitching if you want to keep it real. So I was like, you know what? Send me a ticket. Fuck it. So the motherfucker got me a ticket from Dallas all the way to Cleveland on the mega bus. Girl, that motherfucker took about 45 fucking hours. Why he has a cushy ride to go back home to got it rolled on me, dropped the fucking dime and shit. He, I, I can't believe the nigga dime me out. He had a four hour bus ride. Isn't that lovely? <laughs> well, I'm going all the way back up to the top of the Great Lake. Ain't that a bitch? And guess what? After this shit happened, girl, they put, I quit. I didn't realize how dirty the trucking game is. So I would be stuck with paying for the student loan truck thing they put you through. They put you through a truck school. So now I owe the motherfuckers five five bands for the truck school. So they got off the hook by fire, <laughs> lying, saying I was fired, and then put I quit. Girl, it's a dirty game. That's how they get out of shit. And they throw the, drive, they throw, throw the drivers up underneath the bus. So trucking is not what it is, what they tell you. And they badly need people to drive them tankers, if you know what that is. The fucking fuel, the oil. Nobody wants to do that shit. And everybody's quitting. It's because it's the older generation. And they don't want to be bothered with the shit that they're doing and fucking over drivers. So they're quitting. Or retiring. And they come in and tell us all the time. I feel so sorry for all you 30-year-olds coming in here trying to change your motherfucking life. And I'm like, yeah... So I started trucking when I was 32 or 33. I don't know. Shit, one of them. Let's see. 32, maybe. Yeah, I think it is 32. I'm tired. Yeah, a bitch will be having a birthday July the fucking 10th. So I am going to quit. Fuck them. I need to rest. <laughs> Yeah, I am a cancer, by the way, so don't say, oh, you're emotional, you're this, to a certain extent. But now you know a little bit about me. Okay, so, right. I was born July the 10th, 1986. I will be 35. You gotta watch your surroundings, you know, why you're in Chicago and all that good shit. Because, I mean, I'm parked in, like, it's a yard. It's not a yard I'm supposed to be in. It's in a hood at that. Nobody bothered me, though. You know, I had a couple people trying to knock on the window, sell shit. Bro, I'm resting. I'm tired. I don't feel like driving this truck. You feel me? I feel you, bro. Yeah, that type of shit. It, it just goes, if you don't bother nobody, they won't bother you. Gotta go.